Christian, what does your research show about costs of stem cells and how it will affect the cost of health care here? Well, we've heard for years that there will be a positive result from stem cells in as far as the cost of health care that is completely out of control at this point. But nobody that I know of, George, and maybe you've heard, but I've not heard anyone specifically show how one disease can benefit financially and economically uh, as far as stem cells are concerned. Let me take the one disease we're talking about tonight, which is heart failure. Heart failure currently costs the American health care system $39.2 billion a year. Over 10 years, you could extrapolate that that's close to a half a trillion dollars. An individual who has a heart attack might immediately need open heart surgery, very expensive, rehab, and then starts the medications. Uh, that same individual might have a second, a third, or even a fifth or sixth heart attack like people you and I have talked to. And that cost is mounting. Also, the person loses their productivity in the workforce. So as a country, we lose in that regard also. And they get depressed. That's very depressive. It is a depressive disease. And as these individuals go on, they might need a pacemaker. They might need a second open-heart surgery. They need stem cells. I mean, they need um, uh, stents. And then eventually, they go into first, second, third, fourth, and stage heart failure. Generally, about six or seven years after the first heart attack, as the left ventricle enlarges, they might begin heart failure. This is a tremendous cost to the healthcare system. Now, 800,000 admissions and readmissions to hospitals for stays generally of six or seven days to, uh, for patients who are building up water around their pulmonary, uh, and pulmonary edema, around the heart, around the ankles, around the abdomen, and this water has to be drained off and the patient has to be stabilized. And that can happen four or five times a year. These are added costs. Now, one treatment, Dr. D can, uh, can address this, but one treatment of your own stem cells in a 45 or 50-minute procedure in which the pain, uh, patient feels no pain and goes home the next day amazing. eliminates all of this cost. It's amazing when you think about it, but nobody's really talking about it. That's how stem cells can affect one catastrophic disease. Dr. D, let, let me ask you, do you see the day where people just in a routine examination will go in, get their stem cells cultured, and get injected just for preventative maintenance? Is that possible? There is some uh, early research uh, uh, that is showing that uh, injecting uh, a stem cell uh, 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 repetitively over uh, uh, three uh, months can decrease uh, the plaque burden of the atherosclerotic disease. So for the prevention, I think we are still in the early stages, but uh, there is some early data uh, showing that. I got a question for Dr. Deeb, George. Sure, go ahead. Uh, Dr. Deeb, would you care to estimate what the cost might be, and I understand that this is uh, not carved in stone, but what the cost of the procedure that we're talking about that I witnessed in, at the Arizona Heart Institute with you, that some of our patients from the show have already gone through, like Ron Furstead, how much would you think that could possibly cost as compared to all of these costs that I just outlined? Yes, uh, definitely will be a very cheap technology when you compare it to patients who have heart failures and multiple admission to the hospital because of a heart failure. Uh, so the, the the estimations uh, probably what, it is fair to say a thirty thousand uh, dollar uh, treatment uh, uh, reasonable. And the cost uh, of a pacemaker is more than that, isn't it? Or a defibrillator? Correct. Uh, that's correct. Uh, a a, a that's ICD defibrillators with pacemaker uh, with the maintenance in one year is uh, approximately sixty thousand dollar. Is it a fair uh, question? Transplant. Uh, uh, it, it, in the range of two hundred thousand mm. dollars, so it would not be costly uh, uh, therapy for, if it truly really we can treat this kind uh, of patients. And the early, I think, we are now having tendency to treat the patients uh, uh, very early. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, right now in the United States, there's program to treat 
uh, uh, immediately after the heart attack, not mm. waiting until the heart failure occur. Yeah, they're doing uh, that at Cedars, too. patients who just have heart attack within seven days. Mm-hmm. And just to answer your question about uh, can you envision it to be uh, an you know, easy process, actually, this, this protocol approved to treat patients that the patients come to the hospital, take their stem cell intravenously, mm-hmm. intravenous injection, and uh, four hours go home. Off, so, and, and off they go. That's so, so George, nice. if Dr. Deeb's and Dr. Taylor's breakthrough with a, the with a skeletal myoblast treatment, is effective on patients who have had their heart attacks 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, and many of the patients in the trials have had four and five heart attacks, if that's effective for those people in heart failure, and the new treatments that they're talking about, like Dr. Jadeeb just mentioned, where they don't wait till you get into heart failure, but they immediately begin your stem cell recovery. Treatment. Yeah. Look what they are doing to this disease. This is that scourge of the number one killer. Of I think, I think at, anybody who, let's say, becomes 40, they can go in and get one of these, uh, you know, stem cell injections. It's amazing. My, my gosh. And what about cancer, Dr. Deep? Can you isolate the tumor uh, beyond all the things that people should do on their own, you know, to boost their immune system? Can you isolate the tumor and shoot it with stem cells and eradicate a cancer? Uh, there is some kind of, of cancers and, uh, and known uh, glioma and brain cancer that is treated with uh, uh, stem cell that programmed with certain vaccine. Mm-hmm. So uh, that area, uh, again, progressive, the area of cancer, the area of diabetes, has uh, become extremely, extremely important. And the other area of heart failure, I think those are uh, uh, carry tremendous burden on the economy and health care in the United States. George, there's 3,153. Of course, this number changes all the time. But when I checked last week, there were 3,153 stem cell trials supervised by the government, and 1,366, Dr. Deeb, are using bone marrow. As a matter of fact, I've been able to increase my bone marrow production by 3 million cells a day, and anybody wants to read about it, learn how, it's on my website. Very good. Let's go to the calls. John is in Seattle, and you're up. Go ahead, John. George, thanks for taking my call. Sure thing. Uh, Christian, this is John in Seattle. That's yes, nice John in Seattle. How are you, and, sir? Uh, pretty good. And Dr. Deeb, it's nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to um, you. Six months ago, George, I heard Christian on your show, and I called Christian, and he uh, went ahead and uh, recommended that I read the uh, stem cell research reports, which I did, and his books. And uh, he put me in touch with one of the doctors in Salt Lake City, and I started uh, taking some of the recommendations in regards to preparation for stem cell treatment. Uh, At the time I contacted Christian, my ejection ratio was down to 15. I couldn't even walk upstairs uh, in my house without literally being exhausted. I couldn't even breathe. And right now today, because of all the things I'm doing, I'm walking a quarter of a mile a day without even being tired. And it is my hopes to uh, get involved in stem cell treatment instead of doing what my medical doctors here in Seattle have recommended, and that is a heart transplant. So I am very, very thankful to your show and getting a chance to listen and, and talk with Christian and be exposed to this. And I so much am interested in being able to take part in stem cell treatment as soon as I get the last qualification I have to do, and that is to to get my weight down. (laughs) Good for you, John. uh, Thank you so much uh, for uh, being able to uh, meet people like Christian on the show and Dr. Debs and be able to find out what you can actually do as alternative to these archaic methods like going out and you know having your heart trans- transplanted and replaced. George, this is a man who specializes his company, uh, Real Glacier Water. Uh, he's an authority on uh, alkaline water. Well, As a matter of fact, his company, thing. That's, his as company, you well know. yeah, his company, George, takes water that's 10,000 years old from the base of Mount Rainier. And he has done many medical studies and financed uh, endurance studies and the importance of alkali water. And, of course, when we talked about cancer before, 
We stress that cancer doesn't want to live in an alkaline body. It prefers an acidic, acid, gotcha. acidosis and an acidic state. Well, I got to tell you, Christian, you know, with all the things we do on this program, and mm-hmm. the fun, the entertainment, the information, nothing is more satisfying to me than to hear someone like John call this program. Isn't that and, nice? And, and just know that it's helped him the way it has. I mean, that, you know, I mean, George, it was almost three years ago that you encouraged me to start writing the turmeric and the stem cell research report. It's been almost right. three years. And I have to thank you for that. There's an awful lot of information in there that people have benefited from. Absolutely. And Jackie. It's very easy to read the report. I have a lot of feedback from our patients regarding the medical stem heart repair and the Andy Wild stem cell research report. So thank you, Chris. Thank he's, you, Dr. He's D. one of the best. West Frankport, uh, Illinois. Jackie's there. Hey, Jackie. Hi, how are you? Good. First of all, Mr. Norris, thank you for this. your guest tonight because this is going to really help me out. Um, I have two questions. Um, I just sure. found out that my dad has to have uh, the arterial valve replaced. Uh, the first question is, um, I know you mentioned for like the, the animal valve as a yeah. uh, expectancy of 10 years if he has the plastic one put in what's the life expectancy on that go ahead doctor hey, you're better qualified yes than indeed <laughs> yeah the, the durability is for a long time it's supposed to be for for the lifetime uh, the only difference between the two is that uh, when you have the mechanical valve is uh, that he needs to take warfarin or coumadin is a blood thinner okay. forever forever yeah, forever and the second question, um, the doctor he goes to in Wyoming had sent him to Salt Lake City for a series of tests for two days. Now, the doctor told my parents that he has a calcium buildup on the valve. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, what causes the calcium buildup? Second, how serious is it? And third, if, when, if he has it replaced, will the calcium buildup come back? Yes, uh, it, it is very common uh, pathology. Uh, most of uh, that's how the most of the valve actually will have calcification on the valve, uh, and that's age related. It's inflammatory process. Any inflammatory process in our body will end up with calcification, and the valve is one of them to form a calcium in the valve. It's part of the repair mechanism that the body usually uh, do. Uh, does not have any impact in terms of the uh, surgery because the valve will be uh, replaced completely. So the, the leaflet and the calcium will be removed. And uh, the calcium will not build up on the mechanical valve. It might build up in the area of the tissue valve. Mm-hmm. And on the leaflets, right? All right. What do you think of uh, some of the studies with EDTA, that chemical, that they're testing to see if it will flush out your arteries and wipe out the calcium. What do you think of that? Yeah, I, uh, so far I, I did not see uh, any uh, randomized scientific uh, data to support uh, uh, that kind of, of research. I've been following that too for years. It makes so much sense on its face, um, but the studies and, and cardiologists that I've talked to do not see a correlation. Wasn't there a, a National Institute study that was being conducted, Christian. It was yeah. like an eight-year-long study. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I didn't even know if it's continuing. Well, I haven't heard any great results from it. Usually, they will release certain data, but uh, that is chelation therapy. Right. It's very important if you have metals and toxins in your blood. But as far as reducing the calcification, uh, which you'd find on an EBCT, electronic beam to computer tomography, um, and you would find it there. But that's something Dr. D probably deals with all the time, that calcification. Yeah, the, the calcium is important. Currently in cardiovascular medicine, as you know, the uh, uh, computer CT tomography can discover, uh, can discover calcification in the blood vessel of the heart. Mm-hmm. And that early discovery is important, meaning that the patients start to accumulate uh, cholesterol plaque in their artery, and that means they are in the risk of having heart attack and cardiovascular events. 
And at that point of time, they need to 